This is my Sunday view. And you guys, this is what I get to look at. It's her birthday, but I'm getting a birthday gift. You know what I'm saying? So, sorry. We just sit here and uh, we just ordered, she ordered a T-bone steak. No, What's going on guys? This is Monday Down the Travel Time with Paul. Make sure you like and subscribe. Share this video. Before we get into the topic of the video, I'd like to give a mini monologue. Uh, I'd like to say, I'd like to give a shout out to all 7,000 of my subscribers. I want to thank, thank each and every last one of y'all for subscribing to the channel. And I would also like to say, these YouTube travel streets are on fire. I must say, this the golden age of the travel channel sector. Man, it's crazy. But And, and I would also like to say, uh, there's a black thrift store, holy field looking character that's a YouTuber that's over in Thailand. He asked one of the silliest questions of, I want to say 2023, because I didn't watch this whole corny video, but somebody uh, told me. He, he The question was, why don't I show proof of all these Thai women that's breaking these guys' heart and taking their money? Why don't I, he, want, he wants me to entrap myself by plastering these Thai women all over my YouTube channel without their consent. Therefore, when I get back to the country, guess what's going to happen? I go to jail for defamation or something in their country or, or most likely be banned from the country. I guess that's what he's trying to set. I, I, I guess that's what he's expecting to happen. Cause what man in they, for this man to have been going to Thailand for 10, 20 years, as he say, he should know better, he should know this. But I understand the man elevated don't even get past the fourth floor. His elevator don't get, get to the top. He got some nut bolts uh, loose or whatnot. But I digress. So let's get into the topic of the video. Enough of that nonsense. Topic of this video is his South African girlfriend was a, a deception. Now, if y'all know, Austin had a, he was dating a South African girlfriend over in Thailand. He met this woman April of last year at Club 808, which most people would say that's a red flag right there. But listen to the story. Now, you gotta understand, he's still kind of new to the country. And uh, it's almost rare to see African women in 808, maybe it's changed now, but especially uh, African women from like, that's not from Kenya. Mostly that's what you see along Walking Street. Most of the African women you see are gonna be from Kenya, but this woman, she gave off a different vibe, a different energy. Then he found out later she was from South Africa. But when he first saw her, his first impression was she was Blasian, black and Asian mix. And one of his fans was hanging out with him, you know, he laid eyes on her and said, Austin, there you go, you better go holler at her boy. Austin seen her and he was like, yeah, that's more my type right there. Cause as y'all know, Austin really ain't into Thai women like that. I wouldn't say he ain't into Asian women, just not, he's not a big fan of Thai women. But I think he got a thing for like, you know, Vietnamese women and et cetera. But I digress. So he, he thinking to himself, man, a black as oddest looking woman in 808, that's rare. I think I found a unicorn. That's what Austin is thinking. So he approaches her. They get to talking or whatever and they hit it off. The chemistry is good. And it was history. Now I want to tell you guys something. What you gonna learn from this story, if you meet a foreign woman that's not from Thailand and she's hanging around Walking Street and, and, and she's even going to like some of the nightclubs uh, on Walking Street or in Pattaya, and I say the same thing for Bangkok, if you meet a foreign woman on Southern Bitty 11 at Sugar or Nana Plaza, most likely she's in that country selling ass. She a freelancer. But Austin learned the hard way. So back to the story. He meet this woman, they kick it, and uh, she inspired him to really want to get down to going to Africa. Now, I don't know why he didn't go to South Africa first, but that's his business. He's a grown man. He went to Tanzania and ended up falling in love with the, the culture and the people, I guess. So, he spent some time with this uh, South African woman and man, him was talking every other day or whatnot. Little did everybody know, I used to talk to the man every day like he was my little brother on the phone. And he was telling me things he didn't like about this woman, like she was shit testing him or whatever, and uh, she was trying to emasculate him. Well, maybe she saw some signs that uh, made her want to emasculate him, but uh, that's another story. So, fast forward, he goes, he leaves Thailand, he goes to Africa, spends a few months over there, and then he decided after going to West Africa, he wanted to go back to Thailand. So he goes back to Thailand and ended up linking back up with this uh, woman from South Africa. Now, he never shot full vlogs with this woman the first time around whenever they met April last year. But the second time around when he went to Thailand, he did some vlogs with her. And it's, it seemed like day by day, as he uploaded the vlogs, people in the comment section started seeing red flags with this woman. It's like every time he pointed the camera towards her direction, she looked at uncomfortable. Baby, how many kids do you want to have in the future? 
two? Okay, I give you six. So for eight years, you won't have a life because we just gonna we gonna knock it all out at one time. That way, all the kids could be the same age or about the same age, because you know, I don't want to raise a toddler and then they have to deal with that shit again later on. I want to deal with it all at once. And I think you'd be the perfect mother, right? She bet she better say I guess yes. she didn't want to be exposed because most likely she had other customers to deal with. But like Kate, some people thought she was the right one. They was hollering, officer, she's a keeper. You should marry her. But I started getting emails. People are asking me, travel time with Paul. Why don't you expose Austin Holland? And I'm like, why? What you? What is you talking about? That woman he with, I think they said her name was Misha or something like that. That's the South African woman name. She's a freelance over here in Thailand and whatever. You you talk about everybody else, but you want to talk about your homeboy. And I'm thinking to myself, do you hear yourself? What sense would that make? So, fast forward, people in the comment section on the videos, they knew this woman from Thailand. Some even been with her before, been out on dates with her. Uh, you know, it, it, speed dating. So, they telling Austin, oh man, I know her, bro. Uh, the minute you get back on the plane, she gonna be sucking one of us up uh, for a good fee. So I'm thinking to myself like, damn, bro, how you feel about that? Did you see any signs? But as I watch the videos, I'm looking at all the signs. Like, every time you put the camera up on her, she looking down, she looking nervous, don't want to give eye contact. It's her birthday today, so we had this Argentina look. She so so y'all said she was uninterested in me. She just don't like being on camera, that's good. But we had this Argentina restaurant right now, and uh, we are celebrating her birthday. Whenever he's not recording, she's acting happy, a lot of energy and everything. Then he started really seeing the red flags itself whenever they was flying from one part of uh, Thailand to another part. I think they flew from, uh, what was it, Bangkok? They met in Bangkok the second time. Uh, he, he told her to meet her, meet him in Bangkok at some hotel. But remember, he met her in Pattaya. So they ended up flying to another part of Thailand where they had beaches and all that good stuff. But as they was waiting on the waiting on their flight to board or whatever they were sitting at the airport, he noticed she had a wandering eye. She couldn't stop looking at white men. Now they had a conversation the first time he met her that she's never been with any colored men. Now he got a missing screw. He didn't know in South Africa they considered a mulatto color. But he was under the impression when she said she never been in any color with, with any color man. She never been with a black man. She only dated white men or whatever. Cause when he met her, that, it seemed like that's all she used to talk about was the white man she dated in the past, whatever. And that's mostly what she was attracted to. Well, he got tired of getting all the weird comments. Oh yeah, I know who that is, that's Misha. He, he, they find, he finally brought it up again and she confirmed that she had been with black men from America before. So it hit him like a ton of center blocks from the Rock Rockwell Garden Projects on Monroe on the west side of Chicago. He feeling like, damn, well, don't I feel like a fool once again? So, but what really confirmed him when he was sitting at the airport, there was a white guy walking by and she really broke her neck looking at the guy and her excuse was when she got caught looking at this man, oh, he looks Japanese with her South African accent. Well, Austin ended up speaking to the guy. He found out the guy was from Wales. He was, the guy was European. Didn't look like he had a drop of Asian in him or whatever, but she was capping just to have an excuse to look at this guy. Cause nine times out of 10, she found him attractive. And she just got caught red handed, breaking her neck. So, they sit in the hotel room and she watching shorts or whatever. She watching uh, shorts, and shorts on TikTok and shorts on YouTube. I think Austin was editing the video and uh, she ran across one of Andrew Tate's shorts, I want to say on TikTok, where he was talking about what it takes to be a masculine man and all that and how the women will respect you if, if you hold masculine frame. And after that short went off, she made a statement. I just love Andrew Tate. He's, sh he's such a masculine guy. I love a masculine man. Austin looked at her and he looking puzzled. First he thinking, what the hell do you know about an Andrew Tate? How do you even know about him? Who put you on Andrew Tate? In other words, he feeling offended, even though Austin himself, he's a big fan of Andrew Tate, as you all, all already know. And then Austin also thinking, what you trying to say? I don't have, I don't hold masculine frame? That's what you insinuate? That's how Austin took it when she said that. So, Austin still had feeling for this girl. Now, he didn't tell me much. I don't know if he had her on payroll or whatnot, but then when I keep getting emails and a lot of guys keep saying, she, the girl is a full-time freelancer, even though they say she work a job as a uh, English teacher, uh, teaching Thai students or whatever. That's another room I heard. I wanna, wanna think that this is just another video to do damage control to make Austin look like he wasn't out there doing pay for play. I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't know the man business like that, but damn, at some point, common sense to tell you, 
for a woman to hang around that long in that many days, man, gotta be doing some type of paper play. I'm just saying. Cause when I was over there and I was green to the game and a lot of the women I was hanging out with that, that I didn't know was freelance, they didn't hang with me that long if I wasn't paying. They ass was gone in the wind. So, back to the story. So he continued to do his vlogs with her. And uh, he once told me, you know, he had feelings for her. He thinks she's the one or whatever because she don't play a lot of games. She kept in touch with him the whole time he was in the continent of Africa or whatnot uh, for months at a time. And that would inspire him to go back to Thailand to visit her. Well, it was time for him to go back to Kenya, Nairobi, Kenya. He gets on the flight back and when he goes back to Kenya, her true, true colors started coming out. They get to arguing on the phone a lot. And then uh, she finally told him she really don't care for good guys. She want a bad guy. She like a guy. In other words, she like a guy with like, you know, that the, the, the thug persona or whatever, the bad boy persona. To her, that's masculinity. Doesn't that sound familiar, you guys? So yeah, I guess it turned Austin off or whatnot. So he got to the point where he ain't holler text, text her no more. Then the, 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 the uh, time zone was a little bit different or whatever. So whenever he was asleep, she sent him a bunch of crazy messages or whatever. I guess she found out he was seeing other women or she was mad about something she saw on his Instagram or whatever, so she made a big fuss about it. But before he could see the message, she deleted them all. In the meantime, while they going through their little back and forth, I'm studying getting emails. Travel time with Paul. Would you do a story on her? And I look at the picture and I'm thinking, sure they look familiar. Little, little did I know as I looked at the other pictures, it was the South African chick that Austin was hanging out with. And I'm like, damn. So I used to think you had to be born and raised in Thailand to be a freelancer. But then, and this ain't to get off topic, but I want to make a quick point. But then I quickly learned when I, I went to a club in Bangkok, I, I can't remember the name of it. It wasn't Sugar, but it was some after hour spot. I met this tall, beautiful woman from Kenya. She had like this long kinky fro. She almost looked like the singer Tyler, but a little cuter. Man, the woman looked like brown sugar and in motion. I mean, a cent would spend his a cent would spend eight semesters of college tuition on this woman. Just even smell, just even be in the same bedroom with her, this woman from Kenya. And she would dress fly, dress casual. If she was over here in the States and I saw her in Atlanta, I would have sweared up and down she worked at the CNN corporate building or one of them corporate office. The way she carried herself, she was well smoked, spoken. She was smelling good. I'm thinking to myself, damn right, I'm finna talk to me, an African woman for the first time. I'm tired of dealing with these Thai women. Hell, most of them are freelancers anyway. Uh, and they money hungry. So I get to talk to this Kenya woman and it's going great. Until she hit me with a price. And the price was way, way worse than what the locals be uh, talking. She said, I go back with you. I stayed a whole night with you for 8,000 bucks. That shit hit me like 72 cement trucks at the same time. I was like, well, God damn. So let me get this straight. I meet a Russian woman months ago uh, off a of day now. That's why I don't do day now no matter what country I'm in. If I, if, if I can't uh, walk over to you in person and get to know you, then fuck it, I'm good. Some guy said, this ain't, 94, this ain't 1994, it's 2024. Don't know about a cold approach no more. Well, partner, that's why you keep getting scoped, waking up with a sore uh, booty hole, Missing passport, missing gold bars, missing uh, cryptocurrency, because y'all using these day naps. I'm old school. Cold approaching is human nature. We was designed to communicate with one another. Because remember, there's no relationship without communication. All that bullshit, day nap, you and, and 9,000 more guys tell us a message in the same woman. And I ain't talking about in America, I'm talking about in foreign countries. So, this Kenya woman hit me with 8,000 bots, and I was like, well, golly, man, it was too good to be true. First, the first foreign woman I meet was a Russian woman. I met our bumper. She hit me with a price, 10,000 baht. I said, damn, so what y'all doing? Y'all coming from y'all home country, coming over here to Thailand to sell peace leave? That's what type of time are y'all on? Shit, one would think to itself, man, we might as well mess with these goddamn locals here. So that's what it's starting to seem like. Not, not only the Kenyan women are coming to Thailand to sell peace leave, it seems like women from France, Hell, even the UK. Well, the first night I met Austin, it was two big booty women from the UK at Sugar. We thought because they were snow bunnies, uh, we had a chance with them. But y'all better believe they were talking about a, a, a price so damn stupid, you would have thought you was back in California somewhere. So we like, well, damn. Is it any normal women around this bitch? And, and then make it so bad, them foreign women coming over there to Thailand trying to compete with the locals on selling peace leave. 
but the, but man don't get me started that's why i'm really not for that type of lifestyle that speed dating shit because it is man i imagine if that's all you can do you must you must be out here living one miserable life now back to the south african story so the final straw was once austin got there i want to say south america they was texting and uh she was saying a lot of things that were turning him off that that, that was confirming that she was really into the lifestyle of out here you know possibly selling peace leave so eventually he just said fuck it i can't deal with it no more he blocked her left on red and then he blocked her and as far as i know that was history or whatever they never spoke again but it wasn't history on my end one guy ended up reaching out to me he gave me his whatsapp number and we talked to whatever he told me the whole rundown on her, the whole story he says from time to time this girl goes to 808 looking for customers just like the thai women be doing then i thought to myself like damn so why the hell all these damn frog guy uh jumbo fried shrimp mouth ass dudes keep capping telling you lame cornball that's so damn desperate to be around the president of a feminine woman come to patia uh, a, a damn well-known red light district and go to these damn clubs and talk to these damn women when you send yourself up for failure don't do it now if you think that's that's the all be all is uh spending your money just to have these chicks spending time with you i ain't talking about your sorry insecure ass do what you gotta do just stay off my page don't even come in over here we don't deal with you type of dudes over here not saying i got something against what y'all doing but my problem is i hate when y'all try to make it seem like we should make a career on tricking i don't want to die tricking and then all you guys keep saying uh, when, when this movement first started a lot of guys were supposed to be going to these countries to look for a wife but the narrative didn't change now when you ask these guys that's been living in brazil and all these places for a long time why ain't you married yet who the hell gets married in 2024 don't nobody want to do that but wait a minute so you said you didn't want to get married in america because the laws are in the women's favor well what the hell is your excuses in these other countries and the third world countries at that i know what's yours well at least you got enough sense not to marry a hoe some of y'all not all y'all because some of y'all are wiping up these uh damn pros like i'm like the shit going out of style like it's 1997 or something so you have the, the, I, like i said a lot of guys saying uh well, you, you still, if you get married, you, that, that's just, that's glorified tricking. Oh, well, I'd rather choose that route than the route of still being 92 years old, got to pay for a bitch company for, for 24 hours that really don't want to be around my stinking ass because once I'm 92, I'll be barely able to clean my own ass. I'll be old and decrepit. You think I want to live a old, lonely style like, uh, 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 old, lonely life like that? Oh, with Marlo? Well, Marlo ain't going to live to get 92, but I'm old sitting on the couch eat some croaker brand ice cream and spaghetti with no meatballs because i can't afford it because my ss child my ssi check wasn't enough hell no nah. who the hell want to die alone she i hey i don't care what y'all say i'm a leader i'm not a follower i would love with well and it's happening i just don't tell all my business but unlike a lot of these people i don't have nothing against getting married you just got to choose wisely i never been married because i'm choosing wisely like i said you think i want to be old at the family reunion uh with no wife or none, I'm telling my niece and nephew, one of them, when I'm 87, uh, 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 Keith, come here. Uh, hey, boy, pay my teeth so I can give me a slice of that watermelon and that chocolate cake. You think I want to be going through that shit? Why I go through all that uh, at a family union begging my uh, nephew or somebody to pass my teeth to eat some watermelon when I could just be married and have a wife on standby to do all that for me once I get old? She, she'll be the one looking out for me and taking care of me. Now, a lot of guys say they want to get married so they can build a legacy and all that, but I got a different reason. I just ain't for the, you know, be, being a great great grandpa still going to the Philippines and Thailand to buying peace leave. That shit gonna get old with y'all eventually. Don't y'all get tired of that shit? Golly. And then, before I end this video, Austin finally came out when I wanna say when he was in Chile and said he don't like a boring woman. In other words, he confirmed he really ain't looking for a traditional woman. And, and we had this debate. That was the issue. He thought I, deba I debated with him too much because I told him. If you only go into these countries for seven to ten days, don't look for a good woman to like set a bad precedent by, uh, you know, dicking her down and then she never hear from you no more and then she have in her mind that all foreigners are the same way. Don't set a bad precedent. Just go ahead on and mess with the slut buckets, man. You might as well or, or whatnot. So for all the guys talking about some, it's a software. Shut your damn mouth. You full of shit. The software the same globally. You just being tricked. They just they just manipulating you better than the women ever thought about doing over here. And they cunning your ass. They doing, they playing a long game everywhere. So for you dumbass son of a bitch, just keep talking about some, uh, 
he also just did a short down in Medellin, Colombia with some cute chick from uh, New York. She seemed kind of cool or whatever. A lot of guys were like, you shouldn't be talking to that American woman. You miss a dumb ass dude, that damn, man, American women really must have broke y'all hard, god damn. So, we ain't supposed to speak to an American woman when we in another country, if she cool and laid back. What the hell, still a woman at the end of the day. Golly, that's so dumb. That show you how weak and spine some of you guys are. Y'all want this man to not talk to the woman when she probably most likely approach them or whatever. And man, I came with some of y'all guys, but I digress. Make sure you get down in the comment section. Uh, like the video, share the video, make sure you subscribe. And until next time, I'm out. One.